بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه Dear uh, students, today we are going to deal with the troubadours finishing what we have started from the uh, last class uh, under the title uh, What are the troubadours? In the previous class, as you remember, so we have covered talking about the troubadours within the big title uh, called the contribution of Arab Muslims to the Provencal lyrical poetry, the troubadours in the 12th century. So the title uh, uh, carries uh, a comparison of three points or three uh, segments. Uh, the contribution of Arab Muslims to the uh, Provencal lyrical poetry. Okay, uh, we have the troubadours uh, and the uh, Renaissance in the 12th century. Uh, troubadours, uh, we need to compare them with uh, Moshahat. Moshahat and Zajal, or what is called in English Moshasha. Uh, so, as you uh, studied in the previous uh, class, we had an idea about the meaning of uh, uh, Moshasha, its origin and its co connection and relationship with uh, Zajal. Uh, as an introduction, we uh, talked also uh, on the influence of Arab Muslims of Andalusia uh, in a good way telling the uh, contribution or the influence of uh, Moshasha and Sajjal uh, on uh, Troubadours uh, because of, as you remember, the, the location. Uh, Moshasha was centered in Andalusia, Spain now, uh, Moshasha and Sajjal and the troubadours uh, appeared in, in the south of uh, France. So that the connection was uh, probable because of the uh, close, closeness of the uh, area. We uh, uh, talked also about an example, one of the uh, pioneers uh, called uh, the William of Aquitaines, the first example uh, as Troubadour, William of uh, Aquitaine, it has uh, uh, some other uh, names that, like uh, Colum the Eighth. Colum the Eighth. Uh, uh, we also talked about the uh, uh, Troubadour's contrary love poetry. And love poetry, we need to focus on uh, contrary love poetry. We spoke about that and we, we meant by uh, contrary love poetry that it is. Uh, love poetry, which uh, uh, has limits. The limits of it is just watch and say, no more than that. And uh, it is also uh, uh, a sort of uh, associ associ association between the troubadours and also between the uh, Moshahat and Zajal. We started in the uh, first uh, class uh, dealing with the uh, first example of Troubadours, William of uh, Aquitaine, uh, who was one of the most famous uh, courtly men. Okay, with some uh, explanation, we, we read and explained uh, an example of his uh, poetry. Okay, as you uh, remember, and today. We uh, move to uh, the next point, continue the process of dealing with the, the troubadours. The second example for us is uh, uh, Geoffrey Rudal, after William of Aquitaine. We have uh, Geoffrey Rudal, and he's the second troubadour example. Okay, uh, he was the prince of uh, Thalia, the uh, name of the town or a city of the so uh, in the south of uh, France. A town on the right bank of the uh, uh, Grenade uh, Perdu and the uh, uh, sea. It's the, the, the area or the place of the situation of uh, Playa. Uh, Roda was an open man and of uh, gentle origin. 
uh, he uh, is influenced by the poetry of the Arabs, the most famous uh, bank songs, uh, Geoffrey Rundell's celebration of Al Dilona was inspired by a journey to the Holy Land, uh, especially during the Crusades. We need to uh, say something about his relationship with uh, his uh, beloved, for example. So when uh, Rudel uh, heard the uh, pilgrims who returned from uh, Antioch talking about the counties of Tripoli and her beauty, he fell in love with her even before seeing her. If we stop here to tell about uh, courtly love uh, poetry, we imagine, we realize, we understand that uh, the meaning of courtly love poetry. It is love that is created through watching, hearing, or listening, and saying. Again, it has uh, limits. Uh, its limits, okay, or boundaries, is uh, these uh, elements which uh, I, I mentioned. No more than that. So again, it is uh, connected with what? Connected with virtue. That the person can say, but uh, he, he doesn't touch, doesn't do, doesn't act. So here is the, the idea here, eh? that uh, Rudolf, he uh, fell in love with a countess of Tripoli in uh, Africa, and he is in Italy. He is in, South, uh, in France, I mean. Okay. He is in the south of France. He wrote her several beautiful poems because of what, what he heard about her. Once he took the cross and went to the sea desiring to meet her, he became ill at the time he reached Tripoli and was about to die. Therefore, he was uh, taken to an inn. When the countess uh, heard about him and his voyage, okay, she came to him. Of course, she, she, she realized him, she knew him because of the messages he sent to her, because of the poems he wrote to her, and beside him, and in her arms, she embarrassed him when he was what? He was ill and sick. He recognized that she is the countess, and once upon a sudden quickly recovered his senses of uh, smell and sight. After being exhausted, uh, tired, sick, about to die, life revived in him again. For that, he thanked and uh, eulogized God for allowing him to see her. Immediately he died between her arms. Here is what we say, an imaginative, imaginative situation can be uh, realized. The countess ordered him to be buried in the Knights temp uh, Templar she then made him a great ceremony. And for the same day, the countess became a nun as a result of the grief she felt after the death of Prince uh, Geoffrey uh, Rudal uh, in her love. From the day of what she used to, to be from that day on what she used to be because of the sadness she felt after, uh, after his death. It is said that uh, he had participated in the second crusade of the 1147. In order to understand uh, Geoffrey Rudolph's trajectory, it is necessary to examine an example of uh, his lyrical poetry. Okay, here we have an example. Uh, one. Uh, of his uh, poems called the uh, Troubadour. Uh, if we can uh, share reading, it can be like uh, this. When in May the days are long, I like to hear birds sweet songs from far away. Far away is of great importance because it uh, reminds him with uh, his beloved uh, 
uh, that she is far from him. And then when I have gone, I can recall, I can remember a love verb. And this love is specific because of a. Uh, it is a specific to a specific person from far away. Again, I go forth uh, cheerlessly with bowed head to that song or withdrawn uh, flowers. Okay, move me this down winter ice. I have faith that the Lord will grant I see this love from far away. Saying, again, he, saying as we said about the cautery love, uh, is that the uh, only limit uh, and possibility of this courtly love. There is no act after that. Watching, saying, imagining, uh, hearing only. Uh, but for every, for every, go, uh, every good, it brings two evil, since it lies too far away. Uh, love uh, is beautiful. Love is life. But when we say it is an evil, love is an evil, it means that the result of this love uh, might cause okay, sadness, distress, suffering, misery. Okay, so it is an evil. Why? If the person, if the lover is away from his beloved, for example, if the beloved is away uh, from her lover, we can imagine what sort of relationship uh, between the, the two. Here is the idea to express that love can be uh, within the two or between the two can be a sort of an evil. Since it lies too far away, because there is uh, obstacle, there is restriction between him and his beloved. During the 12th century, nature was described through images and symbols. Poets used to portray the beauty of woods and frost with all their dweller and uh, components like trees, birds, uh, pouring water through the fountains and rivers. In brief, we find all what uh, pertains uh, seasons and time. Here in these lines, the uh, troubadours uh, describes uh, summer's days, especially in the month of May, where uh, nights are short and days are long. And again, in this part, uh, that might uh, remind us with the uh, beautiful uh, sonnet of uh, William uh, Shakespeare, uh, sonnet number 18, which uh, starts with Shall I come their day with a summer's day? Summer's day, and again it is in, in May, uh, expressing the, the greatest beauty of the, of the season and comparing what? Comparing his love or beloved. So here we have similar concepts uh, within uh, Rosal and Shakespeare. The long days have a privilege that it is possible to spend time enjoying and listening, enjoying listening to the beautiful songs of birds, uh, even uh, from far away. And again, the, the month of May, because it is after, after uh, spring and uh, beginning of uh, summer, for example, yeah, the people they, they enjoy going out to the, to the gardens, to the uh, yards, okay, within uh, nature, enjoying okay, the, the weather, nature, trees, and these trees are full with the birds. Uh, sometimes in some places they can find water, like lakes, like uh, rivers, within all these uh, creeds, uh, enjoying and listening to the beautiful songs. When listening and enjoying the music, the poet sets his thought free to recall love once uh, was shared a long time ago. Again, eh? but still uh, sharing in, in what? In a sort of uh, memory recalling, remembering. 
the process of evoking his love with the pillar makes the poet depressed and when he walks he uh, steps uh, his steps are heavily and distressed with such a feeling he finds the poet finds it difficult to cheer him up again owing to what to loneliness because he is alone and again this love the kind of love can be changed into into uh, evil and feeble sometimes the stanza okay of, of the poem confirms that the main idea is uh, a far of love love but from far away, as he said. It shows a clear term of uh, Jokri's uh, yearning for his unseen beloved. Such a story of love between the troubadour uh, uh, Jokri uh, Rodan and his countess of Tripoli is close to a myth, but these lines above make the story probable. It is again a symbol of courtly love. Now we go to the uh, third example, third poet, uh, Pyre uh, de Alberni. He is the, the third one. He was the son of a, a burgher. He is from uh, Clermont, a city of the south of France. He was known for being handsome, gifted, well read, and of pleasant character. He wrote and sang many wonderful love poems. Okay. De Alberni was greatly uh, honored by all great uh, barons of his day and uh, by the most uh, beautiful ladies too. He discarded the charge to be a jangler. Jangler uh, is a mystery or a troubadour, to be a troubadour. He praised himself a lot where he can uh, be felt, okay, that be felt clearly in his songs. So uh, a person of great proud uh, has a sort of uh, dignity, always uh, uh, showing off himself and his state, his rank, his nobility. And it happens for uh, uh, people in, in such a way. Here is an example of his lyrical uh, love poetry that expresses his mood, his mood, his feelings, and the life. Nightingale fly, fly to where my lady dwells, and tell her of my estate, uh, that she may tell you hers. Here, tell her my estates, telling about himself. He is proud of what of his state, of his rank, of his nobility, of his class. And he wants also to know about uh, the, the same with his what beloved. Thus will I know how she hears. But she must not forget me and somehow uh, pursue you to stay with uh, there with her, to stay there with her. Again, a sort of uh, indication to the beauty of his beloved. He doesn't know her. He did not see her, but a sort of imagination, a sort of uh, portrayal uh, concept. Uh, thinking that his messenger, the messenger to her, the bird, the, the, the uh, nightingale, when it flies uh, to his beloved and to, to, to convey his message, he is now advising the, uh, the nightingale or this bird uh, not to be persuaded by the uh, lady of, uh, of our uh, troubadour, not to stay there, not to uh, be uh, persuaded by her, by her uh, beauty, to be allured, to be seduced, to stay there. No, he wanted him, he wanted it to return to him with what? With news, the news he, uh, he is waiting for. When the gentle bird saw her beauty appear, it should be appears, okay, it should be appears, but, okay, uh, this is the nature of the translation, uh, her beauty appeared before him. He began sweetly to sing, naturally, uh, a sort of interaction. Uh, the bird is uh, uh, now is a sort of the link or the association between the, the two couple here. He saw the beauty of the uh, beloved, of the lady. 
Now he started to react, okay, singing, enjoying the time, enjoying the atmosphere, okay, uh, like that. To sing that song reserved for evening. And mostly the songs, they are in the evening, evening because after a hard working labor uh, during the day, uh, to be finished with uh, evening, relaxation, listening to uh, cadence, music, and singing. But then he stopped it and prepared himself to tell her calmly that to which she uh, uh, began to listen, denied to listen. She is what ready to listen to the story of her uh, lover. Here is an example, an example of his uh, poetry. We have some uh, more ideas to tell about uh, these lines. The poet uh, starts his singing by uh, addressing the bird of melodious sound, nightingale. He commissions the bird as a messenger to the place where uh, his beloved lives to convey a message proudly telling about his clear property. Uh, but his love is uh, implicitly understood telling about himself, his uh, property, his estate, and again, within that, hiddenly, implicitly, okay, uh, we understand of what, of the love he is uh, showing to uh, his beloved. He asks his beloved to show her rank and uh, love too. He hopes that they are both of the same state, of the same caste, of the same rank, to make sure that uh, she treats him uh, equivalently, to uh, treat him in the, in the same way, huh? with the same equivalent uh, state, for example, or reaction, something like that. The poet warns the nightingale not to be seduced by the beauty of, his, of this uh, lady, of his lady, which makes it stay, make, uh, makes the bird stay with her instead of flying uh, back uh, to the lover with a uh, positive reply uh, of what he desires. The result returned by the messenger uh, is not only positive but also encouraging. Uh, the birds in, uh, indulged itself uh, mutually and expressed its admiration by singing which is the language of love. Songs okay, uh, are the language of love, yes, so it is what the philosophical matter. This beautiful love song expresses the nature of ideal descriptive poetry. The poet communicates with his uh, beloved uh, through the possible means at that time. The birds, the only means of uh, quick and secret messenger. He is a uh, very uh, important, very interesting, very elegant uh, way of uh, sending messages. And what kind of messages? Messages of love, of passion. Uh, it is not only uh, man, now we, we move to another uh, uh, slide. It is not only man who wrote uh, cartoon love poetry, but also women has uh, her influence for women not women, a woman has had influence in, in this field, even if it is not uh, so much or so much popular. Here is a woman representation of a very passionate love poem. She is Lady uh, Petrie's uh, de Gaia. Uh, this the, uh, the example number four. Petrie's uh, de Gaia is the fourth example of the uh, troubadours. Now, the, she is a, a lady, not a, a man, as uh, the previous uh, three. So if we had, uh, if we are going to say something, we have this introduction uh, reading about her qualities, her uh, personality. She is a lyric poetess from uh, Languedoc of the mid 12th century. She is somehow, somewhat an exception in which she shows uh, deep emotions, usually sung by, by males. I love, I, I lived 
in grief and anxiety. He used the title of a poem of her, okay, as an example uh, of uh, the uh, troubadour's poetry. So it's a love poem by uh, Petri, which mm -hmm. exemplifies the 12th century Southern France lyric uh, tradition. Uh, Petri sings this, uh, this very e extract from a long poem, just as an example or an instance. Uh, she says, I live in uh, grief and anxiety. This is the title and the first line of the poem. Uh, for one fair night, okay, who uh, loved me so, night, as you know, is the person she loved. He is a knight, not ordinary man. It would have made him glad to know. I loved him too, but silently. As the nature of women, uh, the, the, the shyness of uh, a, a woman is different from a man. It is uh, difficult for a lady to express her love frankly uh, or explicitly. The love is uh, seen or uh, shown or understood implicitly. And here is the, the idea of that. I love him too, but silently. So I cannot say he has to understand that without talking by the eyes, huh? by the eyes, by the feeling, by the breath. Here what we can uh, conceive from uh, these lines. I was mistaken, now I am sure. Here an introduction to the way of love between the two, that at the beginning she was not sure, she was not confirmed of his love. But after a while, and now, until the, this time, she is what? She is uh, confirmed, she is sure of his love to her. When I withheld myself from him. After departing from him, I realized how much I love him, how much he loves me too. So what can we see about uh, this line if we read from uh, the uh, paragraphs uh, underneath? As women cannot declare their love frankly, the poetess expresses love to her lover but silently. And this strengthens the shy nature of women all over the ages. Nature, as we said before. At the beginning, she was not quite sure of her love toward uh, her lover, but now it is sure she loves him. She realizes that strongly when she is separated from him uh, after a meeting or so. A love feeling is expressed to confirm that she is suffering the greatest degree of anguish after she uh, withdraws uh, herself from him for any reason, for uh, travel, departing or whatever. She realizes uh, the, the passion, the feeling, the sentiments uh, and also the love of her to him, to her uh, lover. The greatest degree of passionate and unexpressed uh, love and feeling is shown in the above lines to describe the mental and physical state of the lady. Such feelings are expressed in, in, in words or expressions that can neither normally articulate it except from a wife to her husband. There are some other lines in the poem. Yeah, they are very deep, uh, very... Uh, strong in, in meaning, very frank and direct, expressing, expressing the point. A question sent to the lover shows the poetess desire okay, to have her uh, lover back as soon as possible. Power here means love. Now we move to uh, more points. I think this is the uh, uh, fifth example. Again, it is a, a, a lady uh, troubadour, the Countess of uh, Dia. The Countess of uh, Dia is the fifth example here. And uh, I'd like you to read, read about her. It is very simple, very clear, some ideas about her. It, uh, 
passages from her poetry. So it's shown here also. And more uh, explanation about uh, the nature of uh, poetry. We move uh, to the uh, last uh, part, shedding light uh, on uh, the concept of uh, Renaissance in the 12th century. Historians and uh, critics of the Renaissance generally uh, report the, uh, that the European Renaissance commenced in the 14th century. Some others opine that its uh, outset was in the 15th century. For instance, Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary of Current English says that the Renaissance uh, as a period of time means revival uh, or giving birth uh, again to literature, arts, and painting in Europe during the uh, 14th, uh, 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries, which is based on the ancient Greek learning. Here is what, as uh, it is mentioned by uh, Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary. In addition, al Mawrid, uh, a modern English Arabic dictionary, also sheds light on the definition of Renaissance, telling that uh, the European Renaissance is a transition movement in Europe uh, connect, uh, connecting the medieval and the modern age, initiated in the 14th century in Italy and continued until the 17th century. A uh, little bit uh, difference, the, but uh, we, we will see some other uh, arguments about the beginning of the Renaissance, especially in the uh, 12th century, with uh, an indication uh, to literature, particularly poetry, because now we are dealing with the troubadours and uh, Moshahat or Moshashat and Sajal, they are also uh, the genre of uh, poetry. According to the Dictionary of the History of Ideas, studies uh, of selected uh, papers and ideas by Philip Wiener, the Renaissance means revival or uh, return commenced during the 14th century in Italy and moved into Europe by the end of the 15th century. The Renaissance continued uh, coloring and uh, forcibly uh, conditioning several uh, fundamental theories about art, scholarship, and morality till at least the 18th century. The idea is supported by the New Oxford Dictionary of English, uh, which points out that the Renaissance occurred during the 14th and 16th century, whereas the Dictionary of Literary Terms and Literary Theory by uh, J.A. Cadden confirms that the comments of the Renaissance have been pushed further and further back even as uh, even uh, as far as the 12th century here is the the idea we need to focus uh, focus on this point that within uh, Cadden's uh, book of literary terms and literary theory we start to understand that this renaissance did not start in the 14th or 15th centuries and from the 18th century, as some say, but before that, eh, going back to the uh, 12th century. So Cotton adds that during the 12th century, the uh, Romanesque structural design reached an elevated degree of development and also vernacular literature. There was revival of Latin poetry as well as classics. The philosophy of Greece and the uh, scientific discoveries of the Arab here uh, becoming uh, shown after ages of ban by the churches. And this is a central element of uh, going back to the 12th century uh, in literature. Greek literature, especially Turkic dramas, uh, which narrated stories of multi gods faced a struggle and refusal by the uh, Christian churches. It is of this one, multi gods the Christians in this time in the 11th century, 12th century, uh, they refused to accept them. With all this, the topic still of much debate where there are some other uh, historians and uh, con uh, concerned figures 
who supported the view that the European Renaissance might have started much earlier in the 12th century. Besides Cadon, we have William uh, J. Long in his book English Literature, sheds light on the beginning of Renaissance, saying that Renaissance uh, denotes the whole transition from the Middle Ages to the modern world. Going to Haskell, Carlos Homer Haskell, one of those who deals with uh, this topic in his book, The Renaissance of 12th Century. Here we have a, a book specific about that. He sheds light on the issues concerning that the history of an uh, of any nation cannot be divided into standar uh, standardized hundred year segments or fragments. Uh, for uh, Haskell, the 12th century Renaissance started perhaps in the second half of the 11th century. It is true that when we speak about Renaissance, we speak about centuries in literature, drama, poetry, uh, novel, whatever. So we cannot say that uh, this century uh, of this, uh, for example, 19th century poetry, 19th century drama or uh, novel, it is not a segment to start from uh, 0, 1, 100 until 1999. No, it is uh, a sort of mixed within centuries, different centuries. Here, confirming the point, he depicts the mode of life in this period, saying that uh, the uh, almost 200 years of the 12th century Renaissance represented uh, an epoch time of outstanding uh, augmentation in the European mind, art, literature, political affairs, and economical situation. So yes, it is not only one mixed point, it is mixed with many other factors of life. It perceived the increase of municipality and trade, the uh, maturation of Romanesque structure, design and innovation, and superiority of the Gothic method. Going to another uh, critic, dealing with the issue. Muir uh, G.H. in the book of Modern English Literature shows that the influence of Muslim on the Renaissance and its uh, advent say, uh, saying that the Renaissance was the result of a numerous and various uh, series of events which followed one another. First and most immediate in its influence in the literature was the rediscovery of the ancient literature via, uh, via the translation of Greek literature by Arab Muslims. In the Middle Ages, knowledge of Greek literature had crept into religious communi uh, communities. What had been lost in the Western Empire existed in the East, and in the East means the Middle East uh, in uh, an uh, indication to the uh, Arabs and Muslims. The continual advance of the Islamic claim on the territories of Constantinople drove westward, uh, westward to Italy. Moreover, Donald Lehman Clark supports the contribution and influence of the Arab Muslims in the European Renaissance, especially in the field of literature and its branches of poetry, saying the poetic uh, had been known to the Middle Ages on the only uh, through a Latin uh, attachment by Hermanus Aminus. This was derived from a hippo translation from the Arabic of uh, Averus, uh, Arabic of uh, Averus Ibn Sina, who in turn uh, knew only uh, a Syriac uh, translation of the Greek. And here we have so many uh, definitions by Western critics, uh, Eastern critics, showing elements of the uh, 12th century Renaissance, okay, and the uh, influence of Arab Muslims uh, in different countries, in different uh, areas, uh, especially uh, Andalusia, now uh, Spain, known as Spain, 
and what uh, the relationship within the Mushasha uh, or Mushahat uh, as well as Sajal and their influence, their contribution, and uh, their uh, great what we connection with uh, the Drubadurs. And here is the conclusion. I'd like you to uh, uh, read it, understand it.